Greetings sailors and welcome back to Willow Warships and something a little bit different today I know it's been a few days since the last video which is probably a phrase I can say quite often actually you know at the risk of repeating myself um, that uh, yeah it has been a few days since the last video it's not been a fantastic week overall but um, yeah um, I'm here I've got a stretch of time and uh, although this is probably not going to be, uh, let's say, my finest work, it might be of interest to somebody. So the thought I had was that um, I haven't done anything with uh, operations in a while. I did guides to ops way back when they were first new. And of course, uh, they've they've come back. Most of them really haven't changed that much. Some of them have. But aside from things like the experimental submarine operation, it's mostly been reintroductions of ops that hadn't been in the game for a while. And that was all well and good. And um, some premiums uh, or some ships generally are quite well suited to ops and some less so. But uh, generally speaking, if you can get a battleship with a, a strong secondary spec on it, that is a pretty good fit for operations because you are fighting in quite close proximity to a lot of the uh, the, the, the ships, uh, the enemy ships that you'll be facing. So the fact that you have, uh, in theory, less main battery accuracy isn't going to matter as much. So when you think of strong secondary ships, you think things like Tubbits, Bismarck, you think things like the Massachusetts, although maybe not as good as it used to be, but, um, you know, good enough for... Uh, for ops certainly uh, you obviously these days also think of atlantico which has those absurd 9.2 inch secondaries and yes it is very good for operations heck even the graf zeppelin while not having the range has the the german extra um, he penetration and absurd accuracy and very good rate of fire so yeah graf zeppelin is actually uh, a very good secondary ship to play in operations and has the added benefit of you being able to spot for your allies but what i'm going to uh, pick out is a far less obvious one uh, and that is the flandre which is of course a french tier 8 uh, premium battleship and it's not one you immediately think of 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 having strong secondaries well it does have quite a lot of them but the problem is they are 100 mil secondaries and therefore they are pretty weak in the scheme of things but you can buff them up a bit with captain skills especially if you take the ifhe skill which gives you that bump to 21 millimeters of penetration tiny fire chance however but, but at least they are fast firing you've also got a couple of six inch guns which really don't need the pen boost but it's really for the, all those uh, 100 mil guns that you uh, need it Crucially, you can also get them out to 11.5, which I think is about as good as you get at this tier. I think that's what the Germans can get out to as well. Um, some of them are like 11.3. I think Atlantico is 11.3. Um, yeah, so, you know, the, the range is there. Uh, it's just you need to spend some extra captain skills to buff up the uh, the 100 mils. The other downside of the 100 mil turrets is they get knocked out rather easily. They don't have a lot of hit points, which is... Uh, something that is less of an issue for something like, for instance, the Tirpitz or Odin or Brandenburg or any of the other Germans. And uh, even the, the 127s on Massachusetts are uh, decent enough for that. You've also got, I mean, the other 100 mil um, gunned ships you have are the Key and... Actually, I think it might just be the Key. I think the Amagi's got like 140... Yeah, 127, 140 mils. Um, but they have a far more limited range. The, the best you can get them out to is 10 kilometers, and even that only being a kilometer and a half less, uh, even in the confines of uh, uh, an operation, you do still feel that, uh, that difference. But they, of course, don't need the buff from IFHE. They have uh, an absurd amount of penetration because it's the same 100 mil shells that the uh, the destroyers with 100 mil guns are firing. So, uh, yeah, it's it's you, you get to have the uh, the higher fire chance and all that extra penetration uh, for basically no cost. Well, at the cost of not having enough range. So, you know, that's another possibility is, uh, making a secondary key, but, um, 
uh, we're not doing that. We're going to take the Flandre because, uh, because, because, because I've decided. So let's see what we get, and hopefully it will be one that we are better suited for. Because not all operations are equal. Some operations are, like, you know, the, 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 obviously the absolute peak is Narai for being in a secondary spec battleship. But um, some of the others are rather less suited. It's a lot harder to get into range to use uh, your, your secondaries. But we'll see. We'll see what uh, RNG has dealt us in terms of the hand we get given. So in this case, it is a very suitable operation indeed. It's the defence of Newport. So we're going to have ships coming towards us. There's going to be plenty of destroyers and things for our uh, 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 secondaries to pew pew at. And even the, uh, the battleships and whatnot as well. We can at least set fires. You do have a slightly longer reload on this. So it's not... Um, super ideal in terms of the main battery but you've got the nine barrels going for you at least so uh, it's just a matter of getting into range and of course with it being a French ship you do have a pretty decent tone of speed as well but you don't have the speed boost unfortunately so it's a bit of an overlooked premium uh, generally the Fiondra I, I, I guess because uh, it's it doesn't really necessarily hugely stand out apart from its number of secondary guns which is a little bit unusual but because they are the small caliber ones it's it's not something you necessarily look at and think okay that's going to be a good secondary ship and outside of operations to be honest i don't think it's a particularly good setup you're probably better off with a much more standard um main battery accuracy build and not putting those commander points into IFHE which is um, yeah not something you normally need on a, a battleship these days but for you know firing at squishy cruisers in operations well it, it can be fun enough and to be honest I, I, I think not that I'm trying to convince anybody to buy anything here this is one I got given for, for free when I was still a, a CC but um, yeah there is a certainly more of a place these days anyway than than how things were with ops previously for having uh, a, a ship that you basically build for operations and only ever really use for operations obviously to have something like the Atlantico where you can comfortably use it for both is probably better value for money but hey you know if you got the Flandre out of a crate and have never used it for example this might be a thing that you weren't really thinking of previously that you might now have a go at. So <laughs> there you go. I think, I mean, I had this notion a while ago. I was trying out different silly secondary builds for operations and looked at the Flandre and thought, hmm, maybe this one. Because there are some others that just don't work. Like I, I very tried, uh, briefly tried the Nebraska, for instance, to try and boost its... Um, firepower a bit but it's just it, not really worth it with the the 127 mil guns without um the the sort of extra built-in accuracy that the massachusetts has so yeah uh, then you're just kind of left with all the downsides without that one upside where you don't necessarily need to um, like the bonus of the Massachusetts is you don't need to put quite as much into a secondary build to get the effective accuracy uh, just because it has that, that baked in bonus but um, yeah there are people out there though that, that do build their, their, their uh, tech tree French battleships as uh, secondary battleships for real uh, probably more so like the tier 10 the tier 9 than anything else but um, yeah, it's weird. They're sort of they're halfway there in a lot of ways, but in a lot of ways they aren't. It, it might be nice if if we had a a proper French secondary, you know, capable something at some point. But hey, I don't know. Wargaming moves in mysterious ways sometimes. Even if it was something like a tier six. Or a tier 7. 
Right, let's get the secondaries going at the Fubuki. You can see them all going pew pew. There's, there's something quite pleasing about seeing this just broadside of nine secondary turrets going away at, uh, at things. Of course, it takes a little while to build up the accuracy to the point where you're hitting them on a, a more consistent basis, but against things like destroyers, once once they start hitting consistently, they're not doing huge amounts of damage per hit, but you're hitting them often. Oh, we're not actually tagging onto the Alba there. So, uh, yeah, for an op like this, where you do have a, a bunch of destroyers to deal with, it's uh, it's quite a handy extra bit of firepower. I mean, obviously something that they'll have to go, they hit harder, but they hit far less often, and the misses hurt more. Right, so there's the torpedoes, which I should have been a bit more wary of, but I think we've managed to maybe outmaneuver them. Even if we take one, there is still the potential of going back to heal, of course. And uh, possibly I have been a little bit aggressive here, but you know, we've got to get those secondaries working on things. Here's always the downside of when you're in a secondary spec anything, even in an operation, Sometimes you get a bit uh, a bit gung-ho and want to use those secondaries to the exclusion of good sense and tactical awareness. We are racking up some damage. <laughs> it's, it's actually not a bad um, a bad ship if you need to. I mean, probably there are better ones, but you know, if you want to rack up a number of secondary hits, which sometimes some uh, mission requirements need you to do. You know, this is uh, this is an okay one for it. Right, let's slow back down so we can get in range again. Let's see if we can uh, maybe get some fires going or something. And we will have obviously a lot of uh, ships here as well. We don't have uh, any big hitters there to worry about with that group, but. So they will focus you, of course, all those 8-inch uh, cruisers. 8.1-inch uh, in the case of the York can be a bit nasty. We do almost have a heal back. I think we'll take the risk and... <laughs> I am trying to show this thing's secondary capabilities off, after all. Take the risk and... Uh, see if we can get some destroyers into range. Right, we'll lose a bit because we're not uh, in range of anything, but that won't last for too long because they are steadily coming towards us. And it does partially offset the fact that this mission is a bit harder for battleships generally because you have things coming straight towards you, and if you don't have um, superb horizontal accuracy, then uh, yeah, you can get lots of splashes around things. But having the extra firepower helps a fair bit. Although we did manage the Citadel there, so that's not too bad. Right, it's tempting to just keep sitting broadside here, but let's start turning towards... Also, how are we doing? Have we lost any secondary turrets yet? We've lost one. I think we're all okay on this side. Like I said in the port, these are noticeably more squashy than other secondary turrets. Yeah, I think, I th I think time to uh, pull back a bit here. They're not all focused on me, but certainly some of them are. And, you know, secondary turrets doing their work. So that part is uh, absolutely going according to plan. If I get sunk, it won't be so much maybe according to plan, but, um, yeah. Let's get the front turrets around as well. Sadly, I don't think there are any... Uh, I was looking at some of the other, like I said, um, possibilities of things like Nebraska. I don't think there are any um, hidden tier 7 gems um, in terms of secondary ships. I mean, tier 8, you're always going to have the better range to work with. And, uh, yeah. It tends to be the, uh, the existing candidates. I mean, things like Leon, for example. They have an interesting looking uh, arrangement, an interesting spread, and you know the caliber is big enough. But you can't really get the range, you can't really get the rate of fire. And the extra range is always going to be 
or one of the most important things when it comes to being a tier 8 versus a tier 7. I mean there are some ops where that, that still matters less. But uh, yeah, the extra range really does help. Right, let's go and heal a bit, I guess. I'm still kind of mad that they didn't do something with the the California and give that the the built-in accuracy and maybe a, a a good secondary range because it would have given it something and it would have given it a lot of utility for operations. And instead, they brought out the Florida, which just kind of made it redundant. I think the Florida's. Maybe mildly more interesting as as a sort of original configuration for what the North Carolinas became instead. Whereas California, where it, it kind of looks <laughs> absolutely wonderful, its its peak thickness of uh, of the standards of those sort of World War One interwar designs. Um, yeah, in terms of actual performance. It is altogether lacking. Right, we did take a fair bit of damage there, but um, we still got a heal left, and we're almost at the position where I can heal. This is taking me out of the action slightly with my secondaries, but I've got a good enough range here to work with. We may even score another citadel or two at this. Uh, at these kind of angles. I mean, it's less likely, but you never know. RNG might favour you. So far, though, so good. Uh, this one really, like, this is this is one of those ops that, that really hasn't changed. In fact, I think this one still has the original voice lines where they say, oh no, an aircraft carrier is coming into play, even though these days it's a freaking Musashi. Because once upon a time, if you didn't know, it was an aircraft carrier that came to play at the very end. And uh, it could be not particularly pleasant. This was back in the old RTS days, so yeah. <laughs> Even though they they promised to rework it, and you know they did, they reintroduced old ones and all that jazz, um, there's still a couple of operations where you have those shades of of uh, previous times going on where somehow they didn't quite get around to replacing the voice lines. Okay, we lost two on that side, but that's not too bad. We've, uh, like if you get to the point where you've saved the Des Moines, generally speaking, this is not that hard of an operation. If everyone, I mean most of the operations are like that, if everyone's at least vaguely aware of, of what they're supposed to be doing it's fine, but uh, it's, it's when people aren't or when people start doing really silly things that, that life becomes much more challenging and you start even sort of outright failing things that <laughs> really you've no business failing as a team. So yeah, the greatest challenge of ops absolutely remains playing with other random players. <laughs> if you're doing it with a, a full team of people in voice comms then uh, it, it becomes, I would say trivial, but you know, generally speaking, a lot easier. I do wonder if we'll ever get the the promised um, hard mode that they were going to do. Which we've only ever had as a Halloween option. I don't know if they tried to do some stuff and tested it internally and then just decided that they really hadn't any idea how to actually implement it. But hey. Right, um, I might just start heading out and helping on the other side there. Because if you end up all clumped up on one flank well, I can just push through and start bashing the base facilities and the 
various allied ships, which you don't want. Okay, our hipper is just barely hanging on. Uh, that's F-23 is going to be in range soon. Yeah, I've got Ibuki and the Geniser now will want to do something about. So there we go, secondary is getting into action again, because everybody's getting closer and closer. Uh, did the Ibuki run aground? I don't know, it appears to be reversing. So I'm guessing it had a little hiccup. The AI does sometimes get a bit confused. Um, like on this map you'll sometimes see the Liberty ships parked out in the open for no reason, even though they're not supposed to be there. They have specific spots behind the island. Uh, Narai is probably the worst, where it, you, it can actually completely screw things up and you'll get transports getting stuck on rocks or whatever, and you can actually fail conditions because Hey, the ships didn't all reach the harbour area which they were supposed to. And it's nothing to do with any of the players, it's just the AI derped and it got itself stuck on a rock and like just nothing you can do about it at that point. Right, uh, oh there we go, Ibuki's down, Gneiser now, oh well there we go, Masashi's dead so it is just this Gneiser now. Last chance to farm some damage. And we've actually managed to not lose anyone, so this is a team that's pleasantly firing on all cylinders. We lose one of the... Oh, that's unfortunate. We lost one of the 50, 152 mils. I don't know if these turrets are just more fragile generally. I know the 100 mils almost certainly are, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know if they just are especially fragile as a trait of the French ships. It certainly used to be more annoying when your um, AA DPS was more dependent on... when when it was more important generally on um, some dual-purpose secondary turrets and uh, if they got knocked out then you were having a real bad day in terms of your effectiveness versus uh, the planes coming to get you. So, nearly 400 secondary hits. We'll see how much of my damage was due to those. Only eight fires though. Got a full five star run, which is nice. If we look at the detailed reports. Um, yeah, nearly 80k. That's not bad. Not that much from fires though. They're not particularly consistent at setting damage from fires, but yeah, this was a, a good matchup because you have all the cruisers and especially destroyers to uh, uh, steal the hit points off of. So yeah, Flandre, better than you think, at least as a secondary spec. Um, there are other tier 8 options for the French, but... Um, I've not had as much success with them. The, the Champagne has slightly less, but the Champagne's a squashier ship overall. And, uh, yeah, it's it's basically got the same, you know... Like, you could do the exact same, but it would be just less survivable than the Flandre. And, again, with the Gascogne, um, you could, but this just has um, f rather fewer. It, it does have one more of the, the six-inch... Uh, secondary turrets so that's quite nice but um, yeah it's only four of the hundred mils per side so it's rather less efficient if you wanted to do that and you've also just got fewer main battery guns as well but at least it's got the um, you know better armor than the the champagne and I guess you could <laughs> do the Richelieu but um, yeah again not that many of the 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 100 mil secondaries so yeah um I, I could do another one i don't know is it worth me doing another one i might do another one just for fun and um uh 
do, uh, I guess I've mentioned the Graf Zeppelin, so sure, let's take the Graf Zeppelin out. Basically, the only time I play carriers these days is, is if I'm playing uh, uh, Operation. Um, I don't really tend to play carriers otherwise. Right, Graf Zeppelin, there we go. Why didn't I just use the filter? I don't know. It's complicated. Life is complicated. Shh. It's fine. One advantage with the Germans, of course, is if you do have Gunther Lutyens, he has a nice bonus to his, his uh, secondary spec stuff, so you get, obviously, the skills that you can use. This is probably one of the very few carriers where, like, this this skill seems basically custom-made for the Graf Zeppelin. I can't imagine you'd use this on really many of the carriers, and pretty much all of those are German. So, um... Yeah, but it's nice to have, and of course, once you've fired sufficient, uh, uh, well, landed sufficient hits, you even get a really nice 15% decrease to the, the already fairly snappy reload. So, uh, yeah, uh, this thing can be pretty nasty. Well, that is incredibly lucky. We've got Narai, and that is just perfect for this ship. We'll see what our teammates are like, though. <laughs> There's every chance that they won't be uh, nearly as cohesive as last time, but I guess we'll see. Narai in particular, uh, yeah, sometimes you'll get just... people doing inexplicable things. Like, you'll get all the battleships going off up here to sit in wait for the carrier, or you'll get three-quarters of the team all dash for the transports and ignore the fact that the our transports need protecting as they go in and then suddenly all the transports are dead and we have to fight all of the enemy ships and uh, you know hope that uh, everyone else is good enough to manage that even but uh, yeah a lot of the failures in the Rai are basically people doing completely silly things and just being very selfish and ignoring the actual objectives which uh, is a bit, uh, yeah, counterproductive in operations when it's all about the objectives. So we already got the other useful Lutian skill, although not as useful as it used to be. It got nerfed a fair bit, that, I think. That, um, that little health regen. You don't get that much health back these days. It can be useful occasionally, a little top-up. But if it's not um, of where you get the... Um, a possibility of healing your ship generally, then yeah, it's it's not all that useful. Right, I'm going to be a bit rough to this. I haven't actually played this in ops for a little while, so I'll, and my torpedo drops especially are going to be rusty. But you do at least have the uh, rather idiot-proof dive bombs to make up for it. But it's especially useful in ops because. Uh, <laughs> You can basically attack from any angle. It doesn't prevent RNG like that happening, though. Okay, right. So, uh, let's go for the next phase, then. I mean, I might even... It, it depends. Sometimes you don't get people going for the secondary objectives at all. In which case, in this ship, you basically can, because you've got, like, a pair of light cruisers strapped to the side of your, uh, of your ship. So you can just um, park yourself where all the transports are going to come out and uh, quite happily take care of them all that way. Right, can we actually get something more than an overpen or... Yeah, there we go. Right, let's slow a little bit. Actually, uh, get our torpedo bombers going again. We don't have to worry about being hit at all because we are well within the healing radius so that's fine and there we go that's fired off already secondary battery reload time reduced and oh did I drop too early there no uh well a little bit too early but that's fine um we can actually do a bit of spotting potentially there's a couple of weird quirks with this operation like for instance um so there's the Leander there's the Missouri. The Cleveland, if it's spawned in yet, and I'm not sure if it has or not, but the Cleveland does not 
Star... <laughs> I'm getting... I'm just firing off so often. The Cleveland starts off immobile and basically has its AA turned off. So you can get in a bit of cheeky damage there. Although we're going to land maybe one or two torps out of that. That was a bit... Uh, a bit rickety. Right, the mines is going that way, that's fine. Uh, oh, two tops, there we go, that's not too bad. Uh, we kind of want to avoid the Missouri. The Missouri probably has by far the scariest AA. It used to be the um, the forts were particularly problematic in terms of AA as well, but I think they actually toned that down a bit. So, um, yeah, there used to be some ops like... Um, is it Newport? No, Newport's the defence. Newport's the one we just did. The one where you're attacking a, a, a naval base. Um, that one could be particularly tricky because there were some fairly roundabout routes you had to take at least at the start to avoid getting your planes just shredded by, um, by the forts. No, uh, one over paint. Yeah, they're kind of skinny targets. They're not great for that. Uh, okay, the mites is going to be fine. We might end up having to go over towards the enemy CV, but that's okay. It's going to be a bit trickier because if you go that side, it's just the one carrier to worry about, uh, one destroyer to worry about. But if you go on this side, you've got both a destroyer and uh, surprisingly annoying tier four cruiser to deal with. Right, the wakefuls actually popped out. I wonder if that's me having triggered it a bit early, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Also, yeah, going for, going for the Missouri with the rockets is just not the best plan, but they're in the air, so let's just go for it, that's fine. Uh, probably going to lose, lose the Eugen there. Um, I not the best place, I think they were trying to get to where they could torpedo. We don't have any, uh, like, this is actually one of the ops where having a destroyer of your own competently played can be very useful because um, they can just wipe out the Missouri very easily. But if you don't have somebody in that position or a battleship with torpedoes, uh, it can be a bit tricky. We do have this other mines here though, and Bismarck's also got good secondaries, so yeah, we're doing okay. I ain't too worried so far. Uh, I think I'm going to start turning to maybe go for the Lexington though. Looks like the Oigan's Torps are actually going to do some business against the Missouri. That's fine. Waitfuls down. Cleveland's actually come out, which is interesting. Basically turning to try and manoeuvre. And... Uh, position myself to get a bit closer with the Lexington. It's actually in Omaha this time. Sometimes it's a Phoenix, but I guess it depends on um, what composition of, of tiers that you have, which is by far the biggest difference compared to the old days. Although when uh, Operations Very First came out, uh, it wasn't even tier 6 only. It was um, tier 5 and tier 6, and you could uh, potentially, if you're playing as a group, you know, you could make things a bit more spicy by playing in your Tier 5 ships, and it didn't dynamically adjust anything. Uh, but, of course, if you win with a group of randoms... Did I drop too close there? Yes, I did. Two of them went into the beach, which isn't much use to anybody. Um, yeah, when playing with a group of randoms, that isn't so helpful, necessarily. I'm not sure why you smoked there, Vinito. Possibly you just kind of fat fingered the keyboard. Goodness knows I do that sometimes. And here we can at least um, pop a bit of spotting for the Vito. It's actually quite useful on a lot of ops to have an, uh, an allied player controlled CV because it, it gives you potentially a lot of, sp of spotting. Uh, like Raptor Rescue for instance. Oh no, we didn't quite get there. Raptor Rescue is a very good one to have uh, uh, a CV on. Right, we had a Bismarck going that way, which is totally unnecessary, and both Knights Bs, but we have at least the Lenin going in for the, uh, the cap area, and one of the Knights Bs is already there, so that's that's fine. That Knights B was actually just um, coming in that way anyway. I guess they weren't really going after the... Um, the, uh, uh, the, the transports. 
So this looks like it's going to go okay, and we probably will even get to um, get both the main secondary objectives. We are slightly wasting some planes here. I mean, this gets less useful towards the end in terms of your um, actual planes because you tend to end up with relatively high concentrations of um, uh, of ships, and uh, that's still like once upon a time, make a blob of AA was you know the preeminent advice, and it still kind of is to be honest. Um, for different reasons, it's more about making yourself an attractive or less attractive target, uh, which generally a, a blob of AA will be a less attractive target. But um, yeah, if somebody decides they're going to strike you, they probably still will be able to strike you, depending on the carrier. Right, we are a little bit short-handed here. It'd be nice if the Bismarck had been here sooner. And actually been coming in on this side and better able to deal because the Lenin's basically brought the brunt of all of it and it's not going to last too much longer and I'm going to be heavily relying on healing because I can't necessarily get spotting anymore and I'm 100% concentrating on uh, uh, maneuvering at the moment we're kind of rather down on planes anyway and yes I definitely can see that Omaha so we don't want to go too far where my secondaries on the other side can fire at the Omaha. Right, I don't know if we're going to get the um, 1400 assault. Right, we're probably going to get that 2000 limit, but probably not the 1400 uh, troops limit. Right, no, we're not going to do that, are we? Let's just call them back. Focus my guys on the Omaha, although we can still fire from both sides, which is nice. Talking of Warships games, um, UA Dreadnoughts, I mean it's sort of officially released, but uh, yeah, not really. Um, but one of the, the, the bigger changes they made was that uh, it became possible for your gunners to... Well, I think they changed the way that... Um, uh, it, uh, uh, it like it grouped up your secondary guns in particular, so um, they're now sort of grouped up by either being centerline, port side, or starboard side, basically. So um, they can be a bit more dynamic about what they're shooting at. Oh, that was a little bit late, but still got some damage. It's, I mean, at this stage, basically at Narai, you are just letting your secondary gunners do everything which is <laughs> the slightly lazy way of doing it but you know hey if it works it works this is why Narai is basically perfect for this ship so we can finish off this Omaha I think they're still burning from previously yeah, stop picking on our little ship right oh, we're not going to get the 2000 assault troopers in I think partly because of that Omaha um, and other ships taking damage. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to give the Lenin a compliment for like actually sticking with the group. It's all too annoyingly rare to see battleships doing what the battleships are supposed to be doing. And the Veneto, okay, they went after the CV, but having a, a battleship do that is distinctly suboptimal. But the Lexington's AA is, is sort of geared to be good enough that it's hard to do that with another CV. Uh, un unlike in... Uh, um, oh, see what? Raptor Rescue. I already said that. Raptor Rescue earlier. Why can't I remember it if I'd already said it? I don't know, because my brain's wonderful. They are tier 6 carriers, generally speaking, so you have an easier time. Or you can, due to the geography of the map, you know, you can more easily keep them spotted for your allies to shoot at potentially. Anyway, a lot more damage that time and a lot more of it's going to have been secondaries because the Graf Zepp secondaries are just kind of absurd when you get them to pew pew at things. So unsurprisingly both the Mainzers did quite well. 
um, the Finito. Well, it's still got over 1,000 base XP, which is not bad in a, in an operation. But um, yeah, Graf Zeppelin, also a very good operations ship, but that one's kind of a bit more obvious that it's a good ops ship, unlike the Flandre. Anyway, so uh, this was maybe a bit of a filler video and um, just, you know, me wanting to put a video out and not necessarily quite knowing what to do. But hey, like I said, it's been a while since I'd covered anything operations related and RNG was also very nice to me, which helped in terms of the operations and my teammates. So, yes, I can't complain, really. Hopefully you found this video interesting, entertaining, etc, etc. And if you have, you can... Hit the like button, sub, comment, all that good stuff. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.